pulled up to the drive through window to get their food, and then they looked at the cashier and said, hey, that person behind us, we want to pay for them. We call that the drive through difference at his radio. This was in Minnesota at a Dairy Queen. That didn't stop the whole day. By the end of the day, this was last week, there was like $10 that was left over and some change. And then somebody called and said, hey, I heard what was going on there. I'm going to donate 80 bucks." And so the next day, they started with $90 at that Dairy Queen and continued that drive through difference and pay it forward. Yeah, it went from Thursday to Saturday. People just one after another in the drive through paying for the person behind them. Do you know how much was actually spent, was paid forward in this drive through line over those two days? There were 900 customers, so keep that in mind while you're trying to guess at how yep. much this was. Ten thousand dollars worth of food you're just paying for the guy the girl the family behind you i love when this kind of thing happens three days it went started <laughs> thursday went on friday and then went into saturday that is just absolutely amazing that's like the drive through difference on on steroids you know steroids. good <laughs> night that was just something incredible i've never yeah. seen that no, I've heard of different places at Chick-fil-A, and McDonald's, whatever. It might go for 10 cars, mm -hmm. and then you kind of hear it fizzled out a little bit. Um, but that long, like, I would love to hear those stories because I think they're just so cool. I don't know if you've ever received a drive through difference or pay it forward at any kind of level. And if you've received something like that, somebody did something kind for you like that, that act of kindness or pay it forward, We'd love to hear your story. Here's our number. It's 800-447-7234. You can call or text. His Morning Crew. We are talking about that drive through difference, that pay it forward, random act of kindness, because it happened over like three days and a Dairy Queen just kept paying for the person behind them, so much so that it rang up to $10,000 had been paid over that three-day period. Just incredible. That's crazy cool. So we're wondering if you've ever received a drive through difference, a pay it forward, if you've ever helped anybody out. The stories are coming in. Here's the number to call. It's 800-447-7234. Lisa's with us. What's your story, Lisa? Our whole entire office, I work in a doctor's office, and we had a patient that was a refugee from Key West that came in, and um, she was pregnant, her and her husband. As we were seeing her, we were, you know, talking about things, and she said how she lost everything. She hadn't gotten to have a shower or anything. So our whole entire office got together, and we just picked up two big, huge boxes full of stuff, and we shipped them to her in Key West, Florida. It's just it was such a blessing to be able to be a part of that. I love your whole office did that, Lisa. That is just amazing. It wasn't just to pay it forward from one person, but everybody got involved. Yeah, and that can happen sometimes. You know, somebody hears about a need, tells somebody else. Everybody jumps in, takes care of it, so it's not a huge burden for any one person, but you all come together. How about your story? Here's the number you can call or text. It's 800-447-7234. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. 900 people. $10,000 later, it was a drive through difference that just wouldn't stop at a Dairy Queen in Minnesota. So we started thinking with Rob and Liz this morning, his radio high, that you probably have experienced something like that. Call to pay it forward. Call to drive through difference. Something happened for you. We'd love to hear yeah, from you. 800-447-7234. Leah has gone to the store two Sundays in a row, and she goes to buy the Sunday paper because she likes to get the coupons out of it. I get you, girl. She said two Sundays in a row, somebody has actually paid for her newspaper. Really? Yeah. You might as well keep going at that same time, girl. <laughs> I, know. I said, is it the same store? <laughs> <laughs> right. Sharon is here. So what happened, Sharon, in that pay it forward in your life? I had uh, went shopping last Saturday, actually, with my daughter. And um, I, I was in a store, and they asked me about open up a charge card, receive 10%. And we did all that, which took a few minutes. And I ended up and got out of that store and went forward to another store in the area. And um, I got my stuff in there. We kind of messed around for a little while. And I got up there to pay. And I realized I did not have my wallet. Oh. Um, of course, I was in panic of where did I lose it? Did I leave it? My daughter went and checked in the car. There was nothing, which I kind of thought, but I let her check anyway. And I'm just in a panic like, oh, my gosh. And I just told the lady, I said, just cancel this order. I don't have any money to pay for it. She just, without my wallet, I didn't have any money. The people beside me looked at me and said, no, no, we've got this. We'll pay for it. Don't you worry about it. 
we've had this same thing happen to us. Merry Christmas. And it was actually $32 I was getting ready to purchase. Robin Liz. His morning crew. Thinking about this Dairy Queen in Minnesota where for three days straight, a drive through difference or pay it forward happened back after back after back. It was 900 customers, $10,000 altogether in this pay it forward. Amazing. So we started thinking this morning about a time you may have experienced something like that yourself at 800-447-7234. Heather said, my husband is a law enforcement officer, so he, our daughter, my mother, and I were in a restaurant, and a gentleman just came up and paid for their meal, and then came over and thanked them for his service, that it was a very humbling blessing to be part of. I can see that for I sure. I don't like that. My son was in the military. He's a vet, you know, my, my oldest. And I, I often wonder, he never said, but I often wondered if that's ever happened to him when he's in a restaurant and he had his uniform on. I bet it happened. You know, something kind of happened to my daughter that she shared with me. <laughs> she said for some reason she and her husband, Augie, were in uh, the drive through at McDonald's separately. He was in the car in front of her. She was behind him. And when she pulled up to the window, the cashier said, oh, the, the gentleman in front of you just paid for your meal. <laughs> She's like, oh, that's my husband. We use the same bank account. <laughs> <laughs> Goofy. And he was I trying to it. get away with, hey, I'm the super guy that wants right. to pay for the girl behind me exactly. there. I'm I'm so nice. Shh, it's anonymous. <laughs> Shh. I'm out of here. I'm a good person. <laughs> okay. There you go, Augie. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. Ever seen a giraffe on a boat? I no. I've okay. never had. I've been me. out on the lake. I've been out on the Atlantic quite often. Dogs, maybe nope. a cat, yeah. never a giraffe. No, I mean, it happened on Noah's Ark, but it's also happened in Kenya this week because there were some endangered giraffes. These are Rothschild giraffes, and they're huge. They're like 20 feet tall. They weigh 2,500 pounds. So these are huge giraffes. And they had in Kenya, this wildlife conservation group had put them on this island to try to help their population. Um, the island started sinking, sinking. Right. Oh, for real. So, right. So they're like, OK, they're endangered. They're they're in danger. We got to get them off this island. So they started trying to figure out what are we going to do? They built a ferry type thing um, that would move them from this island to another part of Kenya so that they would be safe. They would be taken care of. Um, it wasn't as easy as one might think to take a twenty five hundred pound animal and put it on a ferry. <laughs> yeah. They had to sedate one of uh, the females, especially um, a Siwa is her name. Uh, they had to put her on this boat, sedated. They had to put like blindfolds over her eyes so that she wouldn't wake up and get spooked because the river they had to go through is infested with crocodiles. <laughs> so, get out. Oh. No, it was just one thing after another. Good news. They got them all, all eight of the giraffes over to where they need to be. And now they are completely safe. I'm glad they got all eight, not just two. Right. <laughs> they brought them two by two, though. Mornings with Rob and Liz. Thinking about our military families overseas and how the spouses are here taking care of the kids and how Christmas looks so different, let alone with the 2020 pandemic. So here's the thing. There's this. Um, there's this outreach that's in San Diego. They call themselves the Rosy Network. And mm -hmm. for the past couple of years, they've been giving out Christmas trees to the military it, families to help them out. It is so nice that they do that. I mean, our military families, they go through it. You know, they have sacrificed not only their time, but uh, their families as well. The families that are back here have to kind of hold down the fort and anything they can do to help that's encouraged. So there are people that are coming by to help out in the community in San Diego. Fox 5 was there, and you can tell that it was even different for those that are helping out. I came out here last year for the tree, too. It was a little different atmosphere. Everybody was doing well. Economy was doing well. But this year just hit us all, you know, really hard. Uh, she's even out there because mm -hmm. she's been hit hard. But here's the thing. They've given out more trees than they've ever had before. 200 free Christmas trees for these military families. And thank them for doing that. They had a couple of really great sponsors that helped them with that. But that's it. The whole community coming together to say, we know what you sacrifice. We love you. We appreciate it. Rob and Liz. His morning crew.
This kid ripped a page from my childhood. 12-year-old in Queens took mommy's car for a joyride. <gasps> at 12? At 12. <laughs> at 12. He took off like at 9 in the morning, and he had a 7-year-old cousin with him. Hello. <laughs> now he's getting him in trouble. Uh, I think it was out for five hours, driving all over the place. And finally, the police saw him and pulled him over. I think he's grounded until he's 110. What? I think he would be in my house. Oh, then was he driving like erratically? Is that how they knew? Or, or was he doing a fairly decent job? I think he was driving okay. I don't think he was speeding down the highway. He's just going for a joyride, and they're just going wherever. Well, I hope and pray that he is a a, a large, like tall, twelve year old that could actually see over the steering wheel because that scares me. Oh my goodness! Mm -hmm. Yeah, the kid ripped a page off my book. I did that when I was fourteen and fifteen. A, mm. a guy by the name of Tony Serio, five blocks yeah. from my house. I'd sneak out of the house every night. I was a bad kid. That's the reason Listen. why I got kicked out when I was sixteen. But I was such a bad kid. But we would take that car four nights a week, mommy's car, <laughs> at eleven midnight. Back at oh. five thirty in the morning. Oh, whole routine. My you're killing me here. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're killing me. But you know what? I did it one time. That's all I'm gonna say. I can't get my cousin in trouble. I'm out. His morning crew. I don't bake. I'm gonna tell you that. I have a hard time making toast. I don't bake. But I'm looking on hisradio.com at the virtual cookie swap that mm -hmm. Liz and Courtney Starr are doing together, along with you and all these recipes that have been submitted. I saw one, and I'm laughing, at Redneck Why? S'mores. <laughs> Redneck S'mores. Look at that. And there's one that you use a cracker for. It's called the Saltine Toffee Cookies. You literally use a cracker on it. And if you've never had those, oh, they are so Are delicious. they really? Yeah, and pretty easy, too. Gene sent in uh, a recipe. Rob, because you don't bake, you actually could make these. They're peanut butter balls. Yeah, and it's just kind of taking the dough and rolling it around and putting some chocolate on it, and boom, there you go. So you don't even have to, to bake anything. But she said she started making them about 15 years ago. As a fundraiser, her daughter was diagnosed with MS, and so she sold them to raise money for MS research. And then now she takes them to every party, gives them to her uh, coworkers and boss at work. So she has a great story to go along with it, and that's what I love about this virtual oh, cookie swap. That is so cool. Hey, listen, you can either look at the recipes and get some stuff to use, and if you have one to submit, that would would be awesome. Liz makes those on Liz's Ugly Bakery. So if you're chosen for that, the cool thing is you'll get one of those limited edition Liz's Ugly Bakery apron. They're really nice. Yeah. Liz will even use a Sharpie and autograph it for you. If you want me to. If you don't want my name on there, that's cool too. <laughs> okay, then, then we'll have TJ autograph it since he doesn't like any of the food. I know you don't want that. Mm -hmm. That's one of our producers here at His Radio. So here's all you have to do. Go to hisradio.com. Just tap on or click on a virtual cookie swap. You can tap on virtual cookie swap on the My His Radio app, or you can just text the word cookie, and we'll send you the link directly. His Morning Crew. Must have been interesting for Amanda. Amanda is done decorating her tree, and she comes back into the room, and she looks at the tree and goes, I wonder who put a koala in my tree? When a she koala got, uh, in her tree? Yeah. Yeah, and when she got closer, she realized... It was a real koala, a juvenile yep. koala, maybe in his <gasps> teens. I don't know. But a, but a koala was in her tree. <laughs> she did find it kind of amusing. She took a picture first, and then she called the people that would come and remove the koala from the tree. And then let the koala loose in her neighborhood. So where does she live that she has koala in her neighborhood? Well... You can probably figure it out. It's Australia. <laughs> but, I mean, how did it get in her house? And, you know, they're mean. You, you don't maybe think about koalas, how cute they are, but they're kind of mean. So the people who took the koala and then released it back into the wild, which was their neighborhood, says mm -hmm. it happens all the time. There's koalas everywhere where she lives because they're so close to the bush, so to say, that they yeah. sneak into houses a lot. It's not an uncommon thing. That is so weird. But, I mean, it'd be like a cat or a dog, I guess, sneaking into our house or a possum. I don't want to find a possum in my Christmas tree. No, that would be very weird. 
But if you like get a Tonka toy truck and roll it up to the tree, the possum will play dead. So it'll be all right. Mornings with Rob and Liz. I wear makeup pretty much every day. If I go out without makeup, I do feel odd. I feel different. Now, my daughter really doesn't wear much at all. She'll wear a little mascara, some eyeliner, and I'm just like, I couldn't do that. Evidently, a lot of women are starting to ditch their makeup. Like, more than half are saying during the pandemic, they've realized they don't need to wear makeup. You know, I mean, on Zoom calls and and whatnot, they haven't been going as many places. Um, So they're getting rid of some of their products. And they also, and I get this, feel overwhelmed by the amount of products that we buy as far as makeup goes. I don't know. My daughter puts on a lot of makeup. Yeah. So I've seen it. She's out of the house now because she's all grown. She's a big girl. Yeah. Yeah. Like she, she, I've seen her like on Instagram and that kind of thing. And, and she likes to, um, uh, you know, have the bronzer and the stuff just like I do. You know, you want to, you want to hide certain things that you don't want people to see and, and highlight things you do want them to see. Liz just said something I had no idea even existed. A bronzer. Don't know what that is. I've noticed a lot of actresses, especially some of the show hosts are no longer wearing makeup and making a point of not doing it on purpose. Right. Kelly Clarkson, I noticed her earlier in the pandemic and um, it was on TV and I walked past and I'm like, she's not wearing any makeup. And to me, that was like, I would never go on television without makeup. But you know what? Props to her for having the confidence to do that. Um, I just I for me personally, I couldn't do it. Yeah, (laughs) I'd be like, oh, my goodness. I never wear makeup. I feel fine. And that's the thing. I do envy you to a certain degree. All you guys that don't have to wear it, that's mm-hmm. awesome. Well, but, yeah, I, I have to. In my case, you can tell I don't wear makeup. Oh, I apologize <laughs> up front. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. There is a church in Ohio, kind of around the Columbus area. They have a couple of different sites uh, of churches around that area. Um, they decided earlier in the year that they wanted to really help foster children. And so what they did was they reached out and they got, uh, they found out how many teenagers there were in foster care because they said, you know, at this time of year, everybody wants to buy toys for babies or little kids. And sometimes the teenagers get left out. So they, they set a goal and they wanted to get a gift card in the hand of every teenager in the foster system in their area and it's somewhere around 5300 foster children for real wow yeah Yeah. they're not doing too bad um just a couple of days ago they had already gotten 2500 they're all in the amount of about 25 dollars, and it's to restaurants and things that they can do because what they want to do is give these kids a sense of independence and so they wanted them to have a gift card so they could go to the restaurants with their friends and just kind of hang out and be teenagers. Good. So they, they only have until Sunday to get all the gift cards. This Sunday. And this is Ohio, right? That's yes, amazing. It is. I'm so glad because in the foster system, teenagers can be the forgotten ones. Well, you sure, know? Yeah. And there are some great families that take in teenagers, but there's still mm-hmm. so many more that just mm-hmm. need a place to go. And there, and, and I, I, I'll be honest, cause we fostered a lot of kids in our family, uh, for years and years. Every child's different and it's always an emotional roller coaster. But listen, I mean, the difference that these foster families make in these kids' lives, no matter what the age is, and especially for teenagers too, is amazing. And they might not seem like they appreciate it, but let me tell you, 10, 15 years down the road, they look back and they're grateful for what you do. You know, it's just like it's just like your own teenagers. Sometimes you don't feel like they appreciate you, but they absolutely do. Mornings with Rob and Liz. First, it was a four and a half pound bass. And then the next fish was nine pounds. And it was gold. Huh? Because the fish was a goldfish. A nine pound goldfish. They was this outside Chernobyl? No, 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 no (laughs) nuclear plant close to this pond whatsoever. And so the the recreation department was just going to check the area to see what kind of fish there is. And so what they did was this electric kind of pulse that does not hurt anybody, but it stuns the fish. And then they float up to the top and they're still perfectly alive. They do this all the time. It doesn't harm anybody. And so they did that pulse. The fish floated to the top. They saw the bass and then they went, look at that goldfish. 
It's honking huge. It's nine <laughs> pounds. A nine pound goldfish. That's a large goldfish. Now, some, like if you go off, if you, the tourist things at Myrtle Beach, you know, like, what is it, Barefoot Landing, and you see the big goldfish mm-hmm. that are off Barefoot Landing, and they're really big. The biggest will get to about eight pounds. So, this nine pound thing in the natural habitat of a lake. And here's the thing. Goldfish just don't appear anywhere, you know? Right. So I don't know if the goldfish played dead one day and (laughs) tried to do a Finding Nemo moment from the dentist shop and get out. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) They went, I got an idea. I'll float to the top, and they're going to flush me down the toilet, and then wound up in the lake. But it's a big goldfish. Oh, my. Did you know that you can eat goldfish? I've never tried. They're too tiny in my bowl. Oh, yeah, but this nine-pound one, that'd feed a couple of people. But, hey, yeah, evidently they're in the carp family. I don't know that I would recommend it, but I I Googled it. And, yeah, you can eat a goldfish. Why, why am I seeing – next, if you ever invite us over to your house and you say you're having fish, I'm going to pass on the fish. <laughs> 